Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inner Power Training. Um, we're going to be having a nice conversation again today about spiritual awakening, because you told me on the survey that I gave you on my membership here on the YouTube um, channel, that's the number one thing that everyone seemed to be interested in, spiritual awakening. Kevin Fitzgerald and I have both had our own personal spiritual awakening, so we like to have conversations about it and share with people some of the things that have happened to us, and it can be helpful to you um, to hear about. I know I love to hear about other people's experiences. It always um, you know, gets me really excited to compare notes and see what other people are and it's always so similar you know there's a lot of similarities when you're on the spiritual path but we're all uniquely individuals so we have our own personal experiences so i'm i'm going to be anxious to hear some of kevin's thoughts on it um i've told many of you before that i had my own personal awakening um, back in my 20s when I got a bad diagnosis. And the thing it did for me was it literally shifted me into a whole other paradigm. And, you know, of course, once you have something like that happen, <clears throat> you spend a lot of time contemplating what the heck happened. Initially, when it happened to me, I thought I was just being initiated into being a human like everyone else. And everyone went through it. I didn't realize that after I started talking to a lot of people, no, they don't even know what you're talking about, most people. But more and more people right now are having spiritual awakenings because I see that in the messages I'm getting and some of the conversations I'm having with people because this is the time of the great awakening. And, um, you know, for me, it was a major paradigm shift. I really felt like I was a different person in many ways after it happened to me. And, you know, um, the other thing I learned that it has nothing to do with the intellect. Spiritual sense and intellect are two different things. Um, intellect, you know, is very useful living in this three-dimensional world. And we go to school and we learn a lot of things. Um, that help us along the way. But once you connect with that God source energy that we all talk about, you can call it whatever you want. Um, once you find that and you make the connection, everything changes because then you have spiritual sense, which is different from intellect. Spiritual sense includes things like intuition, um, you might start having prophetic dreams. You might become very psychic when you're, you know, around people or pick up on their energy. You might be able to heal yourself. You might start healing other people. Um, it's a whole other world. It's a whole other dimension. And it's really much more exciting than just being stuck in the three-dimensional world. <laughs> I must say, because when I before it happened to me, even though I was living a very nice life in California, working as a flight attendant, enjoying that career immensely because I love to travel and meet people, but I was still not really at peace with myself. And once I had that spiritual awakening happen to me, um, everything shifted in that I was more at peace. And I did know that there were there were always solutions when things came up in my life. And I've lived many, many years since that happened. Um, there's always a solution. There's no doubt in my mind that you can't go to that place, um, which is a higher realm of consciousness that Jesus was trying to tell everyone how to find, you know, but you got to be ready to hear it. And once you find it, you never lose it. And that's part of my story. So I'll let Kevin um, share some of his insights into what happens to when he had a spiritual awakening. Well, and, and you know, in alignment with today's topic, spiritual awakening and healing are really right. one in the same thing. So in order for us to have this experience of duality as souls, we needed to divide our mind, right? So we have the higher mind attached to spirit. We have the lower mind, which is basically in um, 
uh, where we have the consensus ego reality that we pl plug into to, to play the game of separation, which leads to all of the disease, sickness, uh, that entire belief system comes from that thought system, which is a consensus thought system, right? So we, you got to plug into it to play. So when you talk about spiritual awakening and healing, you have to understand the healing starts with the mind first. Even your physical body arises from your mind field, right? It, everything arises from the mind. If you look around the room you're in, every physical object was a thought first. So when a lot of sacred scripture um, whether it's um, Tibetan scripture, um, um, Kabbalism, Sufism, uh, Gnostic Christianity, they all teach you uh, to heal your mind or let your mind be one. Because a mind that's in opposition to itself is like a house built on a deck of cards. It will, a house divided will fall, right? So the healing is always in the mind first. So when you pray for healing, Here's where a lot of people get it wrong. They only pray for the body to get be healed. When in truth, you should pray for your mind to be healed. Because when your mind gets healed and you, you understand oneness, and oneness has no opposite in truth, and your I am self is, 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 is whole and complete, then you have healing. And, and what happens to your emotional body, it becomes peaceful. So a lot of people get sick because they're not at peace in their emotional body. Uh, they have mental stress, they have uh, emotional stress, and that always gets interpreted, interpreted as physical, ultimately physical disease. So the physical body is the last place that mental stress, emotional stress shows up. So you gotta, if you're gonna heal, you really gotta start with the mind. You can't overlook the mind, that's your starting place. Then your emotional body, you start to eliminate things that you know are not in alignment with the will of our creator. That's where the real healing comes in. And you can transcend third dimensional time holding a fifth dimensional perspective, which is a perspective of unconditional love and oneness. Absolutely. And I, I like the way you touch on the emotional body because one of I've learned personally, one of the keys to very dramatic healings that I've had of things like Lyme disease, appendicitis attack, cancer. There was an emotional energy that I was holding and it was buried in my subconscious. Sometimes it was anger toward another person um, that created the manifestation in my body. Um, resentment, any of those, and you can be very unaware that you're even trapped in these negative emotions until your body starts to tell you, uh, I'm sick because you're making me sick, you know? And, yeah. you yeah. and, 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 and to add to that, as soon as your body starts telling you you're sick, it's telling you you're in opposition with yourself, your authentic self. Right. So it's really calling you to heal that. And, and the Holy Spirit, the Great Spirit, whatever you want to call, um, the universe is is waiting for you to awaken so that it can start to move the chess pieces of of the game that you're playing. We're all playing. We all play the game of separation. But the Holy Spirit, I, I refer to it, the Holy Spirit, when you surrender your healing is is when you get spontaneous healing, when you surrender, with intent to be as you were created to be, meaning not of you, not as you have made yourself to be, which is what the ego does. The ego says, you're this, that's who you are. Your body, your personality self in your past, your present moment is just more of your past. Not true, all false. You are an eternal being, you are a perfect being, and you exist in the all, the always, the now moment. So when you start plugging into that, the Holy Spirit, uh, the whole ascended realm moves into action because they say, here's somebody that's opening. Now we can start to work through this person. So it, it gets the attention of higher 
influences that are a part of yourself to start moving in your life. And that's when you see synchronicities. That's when you see 11, 11, 12, 12, 3, 3, 3. They start, those are little things from the universe telling you you're in alignment to your awakening. Stay awake. Be aware that things are happening in your life through a power that's moving through you so that you can use your free will to take action, whatever that might be in your particular circumstance to fulfill your ultimate awakening, which is the only reason why we're here. The purpose of time, if you want to not be wasted by time, you need to stop wasting time. And the only way you stop wasting time is to use time to focus on your eternal self or your awakening. And along with that, <clears throat> you usually find why you're here as far as what you're supposed to be doing in this three-dimensional world, which is less ego-driven and more other-centered doing something to help the planet somehow, some way, um, because it's much more aligned with a purpose-driven life. You know, it's funny. I um, I always, I use this metaphor. If, if you ever, do you ever see Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the cartoon? Yeah. Right. A lot, everyone grew up with that, right? So you have the abominable snow monster, right? The fear, the monster, the fear. Right. And ultimately, they take the teeth out of the monster and the monster becomes docile. Well, that's basically what awakening does to your ego. It, it takes the teeth out of the ego, your belief in it, and it gives the ego another job, just like in there. So at the end of that story, the abominable snow monster is no more feared, it's loved. And then it puts the star on top of the Christmas tree, right? So the ego, it's not about necessarily battling your ego, it's, it's giving your ego a new job that's no longer fear-based, but love-based while you're having the human experience. Nice, that's so true. <clears throat> and life just gets so much more harmonious. Like you were saying before about synchronicity showing up, um, you're always in the right place at the right time. You don't worry anymore about what's going on because you know you're protected. I've seen that in my own life so many times as an, you know, fly girl who was flying around the world for 35 years. Um, I mean, of course I had close calls, but um, I could see where the protection was always there. It it never went how it could go the bad way. You know, it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, and, and that's the beauty of being on the spiritual path. Even if you haven't had a spiritual awakening, if you're on the path, you're headed for one. Right. And you, you never know when it's going to happen. I'm sure, right. you know, when it happened to you, it was kind of su a surprise. It was for me when it happened. But yeah, and when it, and when it did happen, it completely changed my life. So yeah. my trajectory went from making a self that the world approved of to remembering the self that I truly am. Yes. Yeah. It's a whole paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. And so many people are at that point now because of the way the world is is operating i'm sure just you know at that precipice and it there's nothing better to me than being a radical thinker because then you know that you can take that leap of leap of faith when you need to and you will land on the other side once you've done it a few times you, well, you, well jesus was considered a radical in his day so <laughs> You're in good company. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about, I've got my patch on today. We talk about these patches because they are so amazing. Just yesterday, I got an email from a gal that I turned on to them and she's been on chemotherapy. She wrote me the sweetest email. She turned her friend on to them too, who had back and knee pain that was unbearable. She could hardly walk. They are both pain free. I mean, I was amazed at this beautiful email that she sent me. She was so grateful that she found this through the videos that we've done together. So, you know, they do work and I know I'm getting great results. So I'm not going to stop wearing them and it's easy to get them. I just had an order come yesterday right to my door. It takes about three day, two or three days after you place an order. And really it's not that expensive. I mean, I've had other 
alternative healing things that haven't worked as well. I mean, this I'm sold on because I am getting tremendous results. And, you know, I'm spending like $100 a month. Yeah, less than a cup of coffee, cup of coffee a day. Absolutely. And you can help your friends. And once you start helping them, you know, you're getting it for free, basically. And they're so grateful once they start getting rid of their pains and feeling better and having more energy. And and I'm convinced it probably is reversing the aging process because we're not supposed to drop dead at 77. I think that's the, I'm at that age. I've reached the maximum <laughs> in America. I'm supposed now, to be- Now you're in overtime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go way over time. <laughs> but see, that's the other great thing about a spiritual awakening. You lose your fear of old age, your fear of death, because you know you're eternal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything else you'd like to add, uh, Kevin? No, before? that's it. Just have a great okay. weekend, everybody. And if you're interested in the uh, patches, uh, both me and Rebecca are distributors because we're changing people's lives. And uh, I'd be more than happy to work with you in person if you're interested. And he means that too. He's really easy to work with and fun to work with. So check it out. The link's below. Thank you. You're welcome. You God bless.